Vesper, is a delightful concoction of detail and simplicity, one that is easy to gulp down and leaves an effect for a long time. One of the joys of science fiction is that it offers an opportunity for genuine creativity to mold the world into shapes people would never see otherwise. Good sci-fi movies use this to think expansively, deeply, or, if audiences are lucky, both. Vesper falls into the first category. With a dystopia caused by synthetic biology run amok as its organizing principle, the film takes great pleasure in exploring its world, which is both visually and conceptually stimulating. The narrative frame is solid, and though not always the smoothest, there is an immersive quality to the filmmaking that makes how the story is told feel more important than the story itself. The resulting movie is one that general enthusiasts would do well to seek out, because while mileage may vary when it comes to lingering impact, they certainly won't regret having taken the trip. As explained in an ominous title card, Vesper takes place after humanity's attempt to avert ecological disaster with genetic technology backfires, wiping out not only most people, but the world's natural, the edible, flora and fauna. Society is now firmly divided into the haves, who live in enclosed, technologically advanced citadels, and the have-nots, who do their best to survive outside of them. That usually means buying their genetically engineered seeds, which the citadels, in all their entrepreneurial wisdom, have coded to yield only a single harvest. It is in this world that the young Vesper, Raffaella Chapman, makes her living. Together with her paralyzed father, Darius, Richard Brake, whose consciousness can float around with her in a drone, she scavenges for food and makes deals with her dubious uncle Jonas, Eddie Marson, who has found his economic niche by selling the Citadel blood from his many children. He is a cynical survivor, whereas Vesper is a dreamer. A gifted genetic engineer despite her circumstances, she dreams of an opportunity to show the closed-off oligarchs what she can do and earn herself and her father a better life within their walls. The story kicks off in earnest when Vesper witnesses a damaged Citadel vessel fall from the sky potentially getting her chance to prove herself. But directors Christina Buzait and Bruno Semper are in no hurry to get there. Instead, they spend some time having the young protagonist interact with her environment, not only revealing to the audience who she is, but what this new world is like. Even though her existence can be the road-like in its grimness, Vesper is surrounded by new, inventively designed plant life that can sometimes breathe, move, or bite. The technology she uses is organic in its design, a borderline Cronenbergian mixture of metallic and fleshy textures, often filled with fluids of various viscosities. This show-don't-tell approach to world-building is Vesper's. Most compelling feature, the movie's scope is manageably narrow in that it focuses on such a small community but one can feel the filmmakers taking the central idea, thinking outwards, and encouraging the viewer to do the same, until it feels like the movie covers more ground than it actually has to. This is equally beneficial to Vesper's development, as the viewer comes to understand her through her ability to confidently navigate this dangerous landscape. A few early challenges allow her to demonstrate her intellect, while interactions with her uncle who has designs on turning her into, as she says, one of his breeders show off her resolve. Her relationship with her father, the most emotionally engaging of the film, reveals not only her kind heart, but her optimism, which could be her salvation or her ruin. She is clearly different from the people who share her lot in life, she could make it out. But when the inciting incident finally occurs, putting her in contact with Citadel dweller Camellia, Rosie McEwen, it doesn't seem like Vesper's all that much like them either. It becomes clear that this dystopia has no place for someone like her, and the tension around whether she will successfully carve out a new one or be crushed for trying 
is what really powers the narrative. These two elements, the design-driven world-building and Vesper's development, keep viewers engaged, but they have to overcome a few weaknesses to do so. The film is a bit too long, with the middle feeling like somewhat of a holding pattern, and even though the story needs it to, Vesper's dynamic with Camellia doesn't ever work as well as that with her father. Marson's antagonist could have used a bit more characterization, one fewer scene being menacing to his niece, one more teasing out his relationship with his brother. How does Vesper find a new chance for the outsiders to grow food on their own? Although Vesper manages to steal the seeds, they are clearly not worth much since. They would only yield one harvest, and they would again have to depend on Jonah's supply. But in young Vesper's mind, she is confident that she will be able to engineer a way to decode the seeds and remove the single harvest characteristic from them. With this, she plans to approach the citadels and secure a job and residency inside them, and then get her father's ailment treated. All these plans keep buzzing in her head when she goes out the next day in search of more supplies. She spots a young woman lying unconscious in the forest and brings her back to her house. Vesper treats her back to health, and the woman is introduced as a member of the rich society living inside the nearest citadel. Camellia, as she is called, regains consciousness and looks for a man who had been inside the drone when it crashed. She tells Vesper that the missing man is her father, Elias, and offers to help the young girl and her father if she helps her find him. Camellia herself seems to possess special powers, as she can calm down and put one to sleep instantly with a kiss, as she does to Darius one night when he struggles with his pains. On the other side, Vesper goes through the forest looking for the crashed drone and finds it too, but before she can rescue the trapped man inside, Jonas and his cult of children join her. They strip open the drone, and Jonas murders Elias and then collects whatever useful material they can find on him and the drone. Vesper returns home disheartened, but she does not tell Camellia anything about her father's death. The young girl soon develops a bond with the woman, and she even takes her to see the countless different experiments Vesper had done and their results. Camellia also grows affectionate towards Vesper and learns more about her parents and their lives. But all things come to a sharp halt when Vesper is one day caught sneaking around Jonas' farm. The cruel uncle had been suspecting that Vesper was stealing his germinating seeds, and now he confronts her. Vesper tries to run away, but is intercepted by the children of the cult inside the forest, and they brand her with Jonas' mark, meaning that she is considered part of the blood-selling group from now on. She runs back home and is comforted by Camellia, and now Vesper cannot help but reveal the truth that she has been keeping hidden for so long. She tells Camellia about her father's fate, and even takes her to the place where Jonas had thrown the man's body, and Camellia has an outburst of grief and anguish. She now makes revelations of her own and tells Vesper that she is not a real human being, but is instead a jug an artificial humanoid that people inside the citadels create to keep them as workers, almost like slaves. Despite it being a major crime to create a jug with human-like intelligence, Elias had created Camellia exactly like a human being and had kept her safe for so long. But her true nature had been revealed, and she and her father, therefore, had to escape from the citadel. They had indeed been escaping the citadel in their drone and were being chased by the authoritarian drones when their vehicle crashed, and they landed in the outside Wastlands. Hearing all this, Vesper realizes that her plan of escaping to the citadels with Camellia's help is never an option, and she throws a childish fit at the woman. This further affects Camellia, and even though Vesper gets over her grief in some time, Camellia has a tougher time dealing with hers, and she tries to kill herself. Vesper intervenes, 
and then she asks Camellia if she could study a sample of her, and the woman agrees to let her do it. While researching the humanoid's genetic sample, Vesper finally makes an immense breakthrough. She realizes that the real reason Elias had made Camellia was to hide inside her the secret to breaking the code of seeds, yielding only a single harvest. When they had escaped their citadel, Elias had already made an agreement with a different citadel, where they were promised safe shelter in exchange for Elias' engineering masterpiece. Vesper now learns of it, and immediately starts off to gather ingredients for her new research. However, Jonas visits her house in the meantime and finds Camellia there, and he also quickly learns that the woman is a jug. Vesper returns and stops the man from causing any serious harm, and the two women take control of the situation. Although they can kill Jonas, Vesper decides to let him go instead, and even treats the wounds he incurred. Before setting him free, the young girl tells him that she wants to make a deal with the Citadels, and would therefore want him to contact them. But Jonas seems to have something else in mind. As a man regularly trading with the Citadels, he does have direct contacts there, and he does get in touch with them too, but only to inform them that he knows the location of Camellia, the jug they have been looking for. Much like most other things in the film, the character of Vesper is a fine balance between emotions and intelligence. From early on, she yearns for love and affection. She desires to have a family. The young girl still does not understand why her mother had left them, and she even has a close affection for a dead, unmoving human skeleton inside their old laboratory. It is because of this yearning that she takes Camellia into her life very quickly and opens up to her so easily. Perhaps the woman's age makes her a good fit to be Vesper's elder sister or young mother. In the end, when Vesper declines to kill Jonas, it is perhaps because the man is her uncle, her own blood tie, even though he had never wanted any good for them. On the other hand, Vesper is also not emotional enough to immediately use the power of her knowledge to help everyone around her. She decides to take the seeds and the new science she has learned to the Citadel, because after all, she wants personal favours. To cure her father's sickness, Vesper Ending explained, What does Vesper do with the seeds? The Citadel police quickly arrive at the Wasteland settlement, and the very first thing they do is cruelly shoot their informer. Jonas dead. Knowing well that there was no way to avoid the Citadel police force, Darius convinces Vesper and Camellia to escape the house and hide in the swamps while he distracts the police and sends them some other way. The girl reluctantly agrees and goes to the swamps, from where she painstakingly sees her house, and therefore her father, get blown to bits by the police. Two of the personnel chase them inside the swamp too, and ultimately, Camellia decides to surrender herself to the police in order to save Vesper. The young girl continually pleads with her not to do so, not to leave her completely alone, but the more mature Camellia perhaps realises the worth of Vesper to the world if she lives. With a kiss, she puts Vesper to sleep and then turns herself in. Although her fate is not shown or mentioned, it is most likely that Camellia is immediately killed in the Citadel. The next morning, Vesper wakes up and finds herself all alone in the woods. She returns to her house, which is just debris now and plants three of the genetically modified seeds in the ground. Hearing scuffling noises, Vesper looks up to see that some of the children who had been part of Jonah's cult are now following her since their leader is now dead. She walks across the vast barren land, clearly looking for something, and the kids follow her around. Gradually they become a group, and they come across the pilgrims, and Vesper now follows them to their camp. She had, in fact, always wanted to follow pilgrims to find out where they went, and now she sees that they have built a giant tower in the middle of the forest with all the scavenged wood and metal pieces. Vesper climbs up the tower and sees the citadels in the distance. 
perhaps knowing too well that there was no need. 